Hey guys, so this is a little uh, introduction uh, to a small modification of 2D toolkit that I've done and it's called custom materials and in the video link I'll attach the link with the demo scene that you see here so um, what this does basically is it adds this custom material option to every 2D toolkit sprite um, that is sliced sprites, tiled sprites, normal sprites and then you get this little checkbox that you can use to set custom materials onto the sprite and those materials will um, apply to the sprite you can just do it in the inspector or in the code and then when you click play they stay applied to the objects whereas normally uh, to the toolkit would just revert the material to whatever the material was set to in the original sprite collection. Um, and this is basically the uh, green ribbon sprite. And then I've added a custom material to it that uses an overlay shader and that makes the color a, a little more saturated and then there's another overlay shader with a different color which turns the ribbon into a yellow ribbon and on this text for example um, I've added two materials one that throws the shadow and the other one just colors the border of the text a different color so if I disabled this this is what the colored text would look like just with 2D toolkit and this is what the text originally looks like. So by using the <coughs> overlay shader again, I can just um, put a color on the border without changing the inside of the text. And then we of course have the shadow, right? So now the shadow is gone. Anyway, um, now I'm gonna show you how to do this in code. Uh, I have this Mario here, so when I click play, it just plays the run animation and I can move around. And so when I'm gonna run into the flower, what I want to happen is I want Mario to turn white instead of red. So I've written a shader for that, which I call Fire Mario. And all this shader does basically is it checks the vertex color of the texture so of the texture of Mario here and when the red color value passes a certain threshold the color is changed to white so I've already um, defined a material uh, property on the script which is here so we're gonna use this in a second to change the uh, material in code but first I'm gonna show you what it looks like um, when you just apply the shader so let's select this material okay and so now when we click play the material is enabled and you can see that the red pixels are turned white so I'm gonna disable this again and now in the code inside the collision method we check if we collide with the flower which is this object and we simply get the sprite component tk2d sprite So this will be our Mario sprite. And now we can access custom materials by saying sprite dot custom materials dot first let's clear the array. So um, to make sure that we don't have any materials uh, from the serialization process when we were playing around in the editor. So we're first gonna clear them. Then we say sprite custom materials add 
last, which will just push a custom material onto the stack, basically. We're gonna add the Fire Mario material. And then we say sprite commit custom material changes. Oh, and before that we have to call sprites uh, use custom materials is true. So this will um, add the fire material to the sprite and tell the sprite to use custom materials and then we commit the changes. And when we run into this thing over here, Goomba, then we say let's get the sprite then we will disable custom materials and commit the changes again so we will set this to false okay so now let's click play and if I run into the flower Mario turns white you can see in the editor the custom materials checkbox has been enabled and it's the red to white material and when we run into the Goomba custom materials is disabled and enabled and disabled and just like this you can change the um, color or appearance of your characters uh, using custom materials without having to mess around with creating extra sprites, sprite overloads in the collection. So basically what you would have to do is you would have to make a copy of every single sprite and then use a material overload. So if you have multiple materials specified under materials you would have to you know, switch the material over here and you would have to do this for every sprite, so that's just, you know, a lot of work. And this way it's pretty easy and it's versatile and you can use multiple materials on the same object to create effects like shadows. And yeah, I think that's basically it. Um, there's not much that I've changed uh, in the 2D toolkit implementation, it's just a couple of classes. So, oh yes, and I forgot to mention that also included in the upload are a bunch of shaders that I've uh, sort of, you know, put together. And those are in the Photoshop category and it's basically almost every um, filter that you would find in, in Photoshop is a shader so you know I could change the shader here from something to um, luminous and then you know you can gray objects out like the star here at the top is inactive, well this would be the normal star variant and this is like a, I don't know, copper star or something 